the video is so cool, right? So that's, let's, actually, I want to start with the gun, because I saw you tweet that that's, that's the actual oh, yeah. dirty, hairy gun. Yeah, they told me that when they, uh, there was, there's, when you have firearms on any site, a movie or a video. If you take them off, then I gotta take them off. I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them back on. Okay, then I'll I just keep wanted to see your beautiful face <laughs> without the shades. Gotcha. Um, the, the guy, there's always a firearm person, if there's any kind of real gun on site. So he handed me the gun, he said, please don't drop this gun. This is a classic. It was uh, the original Dirty Harry gun. And I was like, I'm not going to just not drop it. I'm going to steal this thing. Are you kidding? So, uh, yeah. So you was... have it now, is what you're saying. So now I have it. Do you actually? I tried to get it into the Canada. No, no, no I don't, they... I don't <laughs> have That'd it. That would be a problem on an airplane. They probably don't like that I don't, too much. I don't have it. And, uh, but it was so cool to like be around that kind of thing, you know, history. I heard that, that you wrote this record, maybe even this song, like on the last run. On the last tour, you know, I've been Do you writing. Typically write on the road. I've been writing for so long uh, that I just write wherever, like on the road or travel to places or go home. I have a little studio there that I like to work in. But this record was brutal. Why? Was, That's interesting. You know, because there's something that happens when you get older where you go like, "Why am I doing this?" And if the answer isn't because you want to make people's life a little better, then you're probably not going the right direction. But to make music that might enhance people's lives is pretty difficult if that's the task. If it's like, hey man, let's get on the radio. It just changes you know, the essence of what you would be writing for. And so I think because of where I was coming from, where I want to make music, like I want to talk about some stuff that hurts a little bit, uh, you know, that made it more difficult. So, well, I've only heard the single then from this record. So, right. so what else is going to be on, on Bulletproof? Well, there's where, a song where it talks called, about that kind of stuff. There's the a song stuff. called Bulletproof Picasso. There's a I think I think the most uh, I think my best writing on this record is a song called Give It All. And uh, I just was brutally honest about you know what it's like to be who I am on this planet, and I would love it to be a single because I think that a lot of people would relate to it. Is that something you learned from just being a writer and wanting to get stuff out, or is that something you've learned talking to other writers now that you're doing that the podcast? No, it's not from that. It's just from, you know what, it's from having good leaders. Like, I have really good managers, and they guide me. And they recognize, just like you have people in your life that go like, here are your strengths. No one's ever told me I had a strength in my life. No, I'm well, just kidding. someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> if I'm lucky. But, but you do have strengths, and sometimes you don't see them because you're so caught up in what trying to be this thing and to have uh, to have good managers who would be like hey this is what you're great at you know maybe maybe not so much cute on this record maybe more go touch people hmm. and uh, that meant a lot to me because I guess you know writing things like hefty bag you know and and soy latte they just were like you know you don't need to do that let's See what, see what would happen if you didn't. It's funny how that stuff resonates with people too, though. Like, just those, maybe it's because you don't hear them in songs all the time. Like, yeah. those, those catchphrase words or whatever you want to call them. Right. And there is a place, you know, it's like, hey, you can go that way, but just don't go so far that it becomes kitsch, you know? No, I, I got you. Well, even the sound, like, do you mean lyrically or do you mean melodically too? I mean, I mean more lyrically. But okay. yeah, melodically, you know, like, uh, there's such a. a the debate about which is more important, you know, the melody or or the lyric, and uh, but like the the real the real debate really is like the difference between like Europe and America, uh, or even Europe and North North America, which would be thank you for clearing. like ABBA was so massive in Europe during a time where they weren't massive here, mm. and so right now the biggest songwriters in the world are from Sweden and uh, uh, also from Norway and it's because they built their whole listening environment around melody. You know, dancing, yeah, yeah, yeah. they didn't care that the words weren't special and so uh, I don't know which is cooler or better or more important. But Have you done I any of those camps? Have you worked with any of those guys Have tr or tried that co-write thing? with? I have stuff, the co written with a lot of people from a lot of different countries, like Germany and everything else, but uh, uh, I find that, you know, I went to Nashville to do some writing on this record, and I wrote some, oh. I wrote with some, like, weathered writers, you know, like, 
most of the people I wrote this record with are far above the age of should be on pop radio. And I think that's kind of what's beautiful about this album. Is that what influenced the Western tones? Like I've heard you say it's a Quentin Tarantino song, Angel you know, Blue Jeans. That song I wrote in New York. So that's yeah. the irony, I suppose, but because the other ones maybe don't sound so Quentin Tarantino, but they were written in Nashville. Do you ever write, like when, when I read that quote, or heard you say that quote, I think it was an interview, I wonder, do you ever write with visuals in mind? Like thinking, I mean, it, like, it gives you that feel. You know, the only time I've ever done that is uh, if I wrote specifically for a movie or, a, or a, uh, something visual that was a, I was asked to write for, but not, not typically with a record. Cool. You know, I just try to write what I've already seen or what people go through. I like it's just something about that song. Is it, maybe it's the four to the floor. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's the new drummer. I don't know. So what what's it like working with someone else in the studio on a record? Because I mean, it's, it's 20 years, it's right? It's weird. You know, it's it's weird. How does it and, change? And, uh, we miss Scott, and we think like, uh, you know, this is all for the best because it's like every other relationship where. He can be happier working with other uh, other artists and writing, and uh, you know that was one of his his wants in this project, where I hogged up all the writing because it was working, and and he really wanted to be a part of that, and so now he gets to do that, and 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 so we're happier because we, you know, we have a different we have a fresh new thing right now and it's really fun and so we're all having more fun has it changed anything in the studio like has it has it you know uh, it, it did change di different drummers have different vibes you'll right? hear this record will sound like a different band in a lot of ways because the drumming is just different and so yeah you're right different band different vibe speaking of different bands that was, that was the segue because bob do you read bob left stuff uh, uh i i don't read it as, as i the, don't as the zeppelin thing in. come across your desk yeah, okay, yeah, but I don't follow him because I've been advised not to. So people would just be like, hey, let me just send you the ones that are right. great. But yeah, when he wrote about me uh, fronting Led Zeppelin, it was really an honor because I have read a bunch of the things that he's written and I think he knows a lot about this business. And I kind of want to ask, what's, is anything happened? Is anything going no, on? Because I, I want to make that a reality. I don't I, have any clout. I mean, even Jimmy Stafford, my guitar player, would be like, dude, that would be amazing. Yeah. Can I come backstage? Yeah. And I'd be like, no, probably not. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, it'd be really cool for my band, too, if I got a chance to do that for a yeah. year and go out with Jimmy Page. He's, he's all of our heroes, you know. So, But at the same time, I wouldn't want to disrespect Robert Plant because uh, he is my idol. Yeah, of course. But uh, I'd love a chance to, to get out there and sing some Zeppelin songs with that band. He is your idol? Do you actually mean that, or is he just one no, of I, many? Like, no, as, I mean that. He so was, as a songwriter... He was the guy. So, so, okay, cool. So how as a songwriter has he influenced you? Like, Because you're not singing as about a like, monsters and like, that kind of stuff. I don't try to write like him. Yeah. Because I tried in the beginning, and I was like, wow, I'm terrible. I don't have any chance, you know. But there are other songwriters like Van Morrison and Cat Stevens and, and James Taylor and, uh, you know, that I... I'm more I'm, I more resemble I think uh, in the songwriting because the Robert Plant thing, without the combination of all four of those people doing that thing, it's just like it's like any band, right? It's maybe, magic. Maybe, maybe. you know okay. I don't think every band is like that. You know I think there are a lot of bands like you know Aerosmith. Uh, there's three guys. There's uh, there's Steve Tyler and uh, and Joe Perry, but. The real guy who was writing a bunch of those riffs was the rhythm guitar player. I can't remember his name, but he yeah, made a huge Tom, difference. Tom, maybe? Does that sound right? Wilkinson, maybe? Maybe. Maybe that's the bass yeah. player. Don't know. And so, uh, like, bands like that, you know, where it's two guys or one guy. And uh, Led Zeppelin was, uh, it was all four of them. How is it, what is your partnership with Jimmy like? You know, Jimmy is a huge part of Train. You know, without Jimmy, I don't think Train could exist. You know, he's he's got his own his own thing, his own vibe, his, uh, his own way of playing that I think adds a lot to the band. I know you gotta get going, so I, do, I don't wanna take up too much of your time, but I'm just wondering, you're in Niagara tonight playing a show, played there last night. I'm a nihilist? No, no, you're in Niagara. Oh. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> I'm so into the Big Lebowski right now that- So uh, good. He's a nihilist. <laughs> <laughs> you're hearing things. That's right. Yeah, How does we, the set we list work for casino. you at this point? Because you want to play the new songs, I'm sure. Get, get Man, them out there. But we played one song yesterday that no one's ever heard before called Cadillac, Cadillac. And as much as it's upbeat and, you know, whatever, I just think it's just best to just play what people know right now until the new record comes out. But, man, we want to play all the new stuff so bad. So you're of the mindset before the record comes out, don't let them out too much. 
Because some bands are on It's not both sides. because we don't want to. It's because I just think people are like, look, man, you have six other records. My favorite song you didn't play because you had to go play some crap that I don't care about. So <laughs> maybe they will care about it when they have the album in September, but right now they don't. So I think to respect our audience, we just need to play what they know. Where do the massive songs sit? Like, do you like to open with them, close with them? Like, where, where do they sit in a set? With the, the more popular songs? Yeah, the huge hits. Uh, we usually try to play a couple in the front. I just realized there's like front. 12 of them, so I don't know. We'll, we play a couple in the front and then most of them in the, in the end. Just because it's, uh, the, the middle section is a, a good time to uh, have people up on stage, good beer breaks, real good beer breaks. Take a 20 minute break, we're gonna play some crap up here you don't care about. <laughs> uh, but you know, the whole thing is we've planned it out so that by the time you leave, you're just psyched. Cool. I'm gonna let you go, so we do something called five questions. Five quick questions, one word answers. I'll take my sunglasses off for this because I take these questions very seriously. Okay, road or studio? <sighs> Man, I can't have one without the other. Lennon or McCartney? Without question, McCartney. When you hear a song, what usually hits you first? This goes back to one of, the, one of your answers from before. Lyrics, melody, or rhythm? I go with lyrics, but it doesn't make me right. Yes, <laughs> If someone's never heard Train before, what song do they start with? I would always say Drops of Jupiter, or even Meet Virginia. I, I, I would start from the beginning, I think, because we become, you know, a different version of ourselves. Yeah, Angel doesn't sound anything like Meet Virginia. Like, they I, came on Shuffle back to back this right. morning, and I was just like, yeah, wow. totally different. Yeah. It's like a different band, but hopefully, years do that. hopefully there'll be some, some essence of the same band. You know, I think this record might be closer to the first record than the other records have Okay. Been. Except not sonically, but more like Emotionally. in the subject. Interesting. Yeah. In one word, train. Uh, authentic. Oh, that's a good one. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Check out the eyes. I don't lie. <laughs> Except to women. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't lie. I don't lie to anybody. I'm too boring to lie. But I'll lie to you behind the camera, because you're a jerk. <laughs> awesome. All right. That might be the best ending I've ever had. <laughs> you're not a jerk, uh -oh. and you could probably beat me up, so I think be careful. <laughs>